Hello everyone, I'd like to look this week at automatically making sure that all the rooms in a floor plan view conform to the right work set. Over here you can see we've got some room elements. This room element over here, as you can see by the orange um, reference lines that you can see that big cross there, it's an orange, it's the same as this one over here, it's an orange, that means that the room is in that work set. And over here we can see this is on the ground floor work set. This one is in the wrong work set. It's in the furniture work set. And that one over there, that's also in the furniture work set. So it's in the wrong work set. And we can see, well, whoever modeled this, in this case me, has made some errors. And now they need to go and fix the errors. So this could take a while. And we'd like to do that automatically. So, or quickly. So what we'd like to do is to select all of the rooms. So I click on one of the rooms and I right click and I say select all instances and I find out, oops, I can't go further because I can't select all the rooms that are visible in the view. And I'd like to place everything on the ground floor, all the rooms on the ground floor in the same view. So I'm stuck. So what do we do? Well, this is a perfect case for Dynamo. This is where Dynamo comes alive. Now you might want to do this to all the furniture, all the categories. Remember, Revit is divvied up into categories, and these categories are available for selection from within Dynamo. In addition to that, note that the rooms have an image and an, an instant property of a level. All right. There's the level property, automatically it's placed in ground level. If you don't want it in ground level, you would have to cut it and paste it onto the correct level. That's how the rooms work. So let's go and have a look at Dynamo. Here's Dynamo. This is the little script that I've created for it. And I'd like to explain to you how I came to the script. First of all, within the Revit selection, there's our elements. There's the selection tools. We'll see that we've got the categories available, that's this node over here, and we select rooms, now, all the rooms in the project. Then we're going to get all of the elements of that category, that's going to select all the rooms in the project, not only the rooms that are on level one. And we're going to use the property, which is called level, there it is. We're going to use the property, and we can see those through the element dot parameters node so that's usually how I go about it is I want to know what parameters which parameters are available for me to select by so in the Revit element element node we find that we've got the parameters node and that will give us the parameters in there we inspect that visually and then we can use that parameter let's just freeze this out of the execution and unfreeze the other thread all right so I know that I'm going to get the parameter from the elements and that's going to be the level parameter that's going to list for me the values over here so let's see what that results in I'm going to run this script let me freeze it over here I'm going to run the script and that's going to show me that in this case all of the rooms that were created are on the ground level. Let's see if we can put one on the mezzanine floor. Let's find some place where it will generate. Ah, this should work. All right, let's see. Architecture, room. There we place it. This room is on mezzanine one. All right, let's go back to Dynamo. Let's run the script again. And this time we should find that one of them is on, there we go, mezzanine one. All right, so if you have a nice large project and it's been developed properly, not just somebody like me working on the ground floor, and you've got lots of floors with lots of rooms, then you'd now like to filter out all of the rooms that have the level property equals to ground level. Let's unfreeze that part of the code again. So I've created this code block. You just right click and um, we'll just double click and then the code block comes up and I've created a parameter um, that is called level with a double L and I said that must be equal to so it's a double equal sign 
and then in quotation marks ground level because it's a text parameter and this feeds into a list filter by bool mask or boolean mask which says that the mask is anything with where the parameter is ground level and the list is all of the elements and what that's going to do let's freeze out the rest of the of the threads and let's see what that does all right so that's going to give me two lists the in list and the out list those that correspond and those that don't run it and we'll see that list over here so we've got all of these rooms that correspond to um, and to the level being ground and then we've got this one over here where the list is mezzanine one and so if we take the in node that's coming out of the filter by bool mask that's now going to be the elements that we're looking for so in the first place we're going to have a look at how do we enforce the work set all right so again we've got a code block with the name in quotation marks of the work set that we'd like to apply then we're using this work set by name node you can see how it's part of the archilab package all right so for those that you don't know you go into here to packages and you can search for a package and install the package and that is now over and above what um, revit and dynamo come out with from the beginning we've now got the archilab package and in here somewhere um, it's probably within i don't know revit maybe workspaces let's hope but somewhere in here there's now our there's our work set tools and then we've got the work set by name so it's probably this it work set name or work set by name let's find out where this is so we search work set dot by by name work set All right there it is You'd have to look through the Archilab just to get... I'm not that familiar with it, but somewhere in here there's the workset by name. And then this then feeds into the workset ID, which is also an Archilab. You can see if you look at the help there, it's also an Archilab node. So what this is doing is it's fetching all of the work, or it's fetching the workset having this name. So that's a workset element. Let's freeze out the phasing for the moment. So we freeze out that thread and let's run. And then we can see over here that we've got the work set by name. There it is. But that work set has a ID. And when you look at the parameters, you'll see how the work set property property, sorry, let's expand this. The work set property of the room. There it is. Okay. Now, when you set it, you need to set it by using the ID. Right, so sometimes you just have to know these things, or you look it up in the in the Revit API, and then here you can see the value that we want to input is the work set ID. The parameter is the work set for the room, and then the element is going to be all the rooms that are on level one. So this is now going to use the element set parameter. Let's unfreeze that and let's have a look at the node that we are using. It's the Revit element element, Revit elements element, and then we've got the set parameter by value, set parameter value by name. All right, now that's this node over here. And so when we run this now, since we are isolating all of the rooms, getting the work set ID. We've got the property that we'd like to set. There's all the elements and the value is all of the ground floor work set. Okay, so let's run it. And what we're gonna find is that on my ground floor, it's now set all of the work sets. Remember this one was in the wrong work set. That was in the furniture work set. That's no longer in the furniture work set. It's on the ground floor. And this one is also on the ground floor, all right? So instead of checking each one individually or selecting each one individually that's wrong and then correcting it visually, we are now enforcing this using a Dynamo script and we're saying just select it all and set the property correctly. That's because it's frozen. Let's run it. 
and there it generates its read only. Okay, so it is read only. So that's not going to work for us. All right. So some things you can do, some things you can't. That's just the Revit API. And but we can most of the parameters you can set. If you can't set it, well, tough luck. You have to do that manually. But at least this is going to enforce the work sets for us very quickly. We don't have to worry about that. You can do the same thing with all the furniture in the category. So you can change that out. You could, you know, you could change the category to say to to, to furniture. There's furniture, all right, and then you can just enforce the correct work set over there. So you can set up a, a lot of these threads, and ultimately, um, ultimately you can um, use this method to enforce the work sets for anything on that work on that floor that you would like to get onto the correct work set. All right, but just note, like with phasing, yeah, you can't enforce the phasing through dynamo well i hope this has been an instructive video for you and that you've learned uh, something about uh, dynamo and revit um, and that if you can't do something with an api in a graphical user interface with uh, revit um, and you can't select all the views uh, the rooms in the view you can at least use dynamo to accomplish the same and then enforce the work set the next time have a great time reviting